Hi everyone, my name is Katie, and thank you for joining me, or should I say us, for another Animal Crossing video. I'm getting pretty close to finally finishing this dang island of Polyphia, and I have just a couple larger builds left, but mostly I have open space and filler areas that I need to finish up. So today I will be working on one of those filler areas and showing you how I create fake buildings and create areas that take up space. So let's get started. So this area that I'm working on is directly behind my museum castle build that I did in my last speed build video. And it is a little bit awkward working behind such a tall build with those castle walls and the cliffs and everything. So if some of these shots aren't amazing, I do apologize. I was really working in some tight quarters with this one. But I started out by just extending this road, which is an offshoot of Shino's shrine and the little overlook that I created probably about half a year ago at this point. I will have any of the videos that I reference linked in my description box down below. I mentioned in the intro, but I am getting very close to finishing this dang island. I am very excited. I always get very excited to start a new island and I hope that I don't get burnt out and I hope that I can find some motivation to finish this one so that I can get started on what comes next. It's also helpful that spring is around the corner and working in cherry blossom season makes me really long for spring and it snowed today <laughs> the day that i am recording this intro and i am totally over the snow so i'm ready for spring now i am extending this road to go into a cul-de-sac because you know me and my cul-de-sacs i love them i can't get enough of them this cul-de-sac will lead to the two houses that are back there in the background and that is one of the bigger builds that I have left to do on the island but those are the last houses that I have to decorate which is pretty exciting. I'm getting there. I'm a very slow island designer but I'm getting there and that makes me excited. So then I am building up these cliffs. This is the starting point for my fake buildings. It is just a two by three cliff. And then I surround the cliffs with the medieval sidewalls. Of course, because this is a cherry blossom island, I had to use the pink variation. It is seriously so cute. I still don't understand why they didn't make a matching castle wall variant for this beautiful pastel pink. So yeah, I'm just adding the medieval sidewalls to each side of the little cliffs. Two in the front, two in the back, and one on each side. Then I climb up to the top of the cliff and add in a custom code just so you don't see that green when you pan up or walk by the cliff. And on top of the cliffs, I'm adding a party lights arch in my favorite variant. You could put plants up here or if you wanted to make a bigger building, I really like when I can add the storefront items. That looks really good. I'll, again, have a video linked below on how I made some fake buildings using those storefronts. And I just think this looks so cute. I love the party lights and seeing them poke out from the top, I think looks really nice. And then I got started on extending this up into a cul-de-sac. I do, in this video, create the actual cul-de-sac 
which at this point, how many times have I done this? I don't know. And then one thing I really wanted to do with this cul-de-sac was use that fence item to surround one of the park trees. I can't remember what they're actually called in the game, but I really wanted to do that because I haven't done that yet and I really like how it looks. So I just left that fence there to remind myself that that is what I wanted to do here. And I'm just going around filling in the different patterns to create the cul-de-sac. As always, I choose one uh, specific pattern, such as the solid sidewalk, and I lay down all of the solid sidewalks in all of the places that it needs to go. And then I switch to the diagonals, and I do the diagonals, and then I switch to the actual road paths, and so on and so forth. I probably could do this in my sleep at this point, but sometimes I do dream about other Animal Crossing things though. Do you ever do that? I don't know. <laughs> Is that weird? Anyway, so I'm wrapping up this cul-de-sac and after I get some more motivation, I will be completing this little neighborhood which will branch out into these two houses which are going to be little fishing huts and I'm so excited. I think it's gonna look very, very cute. So now that I have all of those codes laid down, I again am going to add in these fences and eventually that tree item that I really like, the evergreen ash, that's what it's called. Again, had to go with the pink fence because when else am I going to use it <laughs> if not on this island? And I do think it looks really cute, especially behind the pink fake buildings and with all of the cherry blossoms. And then I'm just putting in some trees to, again, fill up space. Trees are probably one of the best ways to fill up space and create transition areas. And I'm just creating more height behind the buildings themselves with the bamboo trees and these maypoles. And then it was time to start decorating. I wanted these little fake buildings to look like little storefronts, kind of like a little downtown area. So I added in one of my favorite items, the phone booth with a park clock. And then I also put in these pink covered counters because again, when else am I ever going to use these? And I think that they look so cute with those little rose details. And I made the fake building on the right into a little cinnamon roll, kind of little cinnamon roll stand with some peach accessories, I guess. And I added in some street lights and also had to put in some different menu boards for the little storefronts. I basically just picked all of my favorite white and pink items and added them all around in this build, including my favorite modes of transportation, like the cruiser bike and the scooter. And here I am figuring out what kind of food I want to put on the covered counter. And as I said, I went with the peach vibe because those are some of my favorite food items in the game. And on the left, I went with more of a tea party vibe, I guess. Really, I was just using my favorite cutesy pink items as I always am on this island. And then to fill in more space, I put down some of my custom codes behind the fake buildings themselves. And I added some more trees directly behind the museum. And then I just added some finishing items like the cherry blossom petal pile and some butterfly models. And I was done. All right, everyone. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this one. I hope that maybe you got some ideas 
for filling up space because I feel like when you're creating an Animal Crossing island, either you don't have enough space to fit in everything you want or you have too much space that you need to fill. And it feels like there's no in-between <laughs> between those things. So if you are needing some ideas, I will be continuing to post the ways that I'm filling in space because I feel like I just have so much space on this island. Also, how freaking cute is Shino? This little market area is right next to her house or her shrine where she resides, so I loved that she came to visit right away. But anyway, I hope that you liked this one. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. And if you'd like to see more from me, be sure to hit subscribe and click on that bell to be notified when I post a new video. I hope that you and yours are staying safe, happy, and healthy, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks again. Bye-bye!